Hello, and welcome to the University of Ottawa Heart Institute's Cardiac Surgery Prehabilitation Video Series. My name is Catherine Caldwell. I'm a registered nurse in the Division of Prevention and Rehabilitation here at the Heart Institute. As you follow this video series, you can use the Waiting for Cardiac Surgery booklet or the Cardiac Pre Prehabilitation Guide for a reference. Both these guides are available in French and English and can be accessed through the Surgical Triage Office or on the Heart Institute website. This is the Waiting for Surgery Guide and this is the Prehab Guide. Waiting for cardiac or heart surgery can be an emotional and stressful time, not only for the patient, but also for the family, partner, or friend supporting them through this journey. It is normal for not only the patient, but for the caregiver to worry and feel stressed. Therefore, this prehabilitation, or prehab as we affectionately call it, for short, video series, has been developed by the multidisciplinary team of nursing, physiotherapy, social work, and dietetics to provide information and education to help you better prepare for your upcoming cardiac surgery. The benefits of prehab include, next slide please, thank you. Improved physical and psychological readiness for surgery, reduced complications after surgery, reduced length of stay in hospital after surgery, improved transition from hospital to the community. We have divided this presentation into four parts so that you are able to view the information in shorter segments. It is important that you view all four videos as they, as they are equally important in preparing you for your upcoming surgery. This next slide that we're just showing now, oh, sorry, back, is a table of contents that can help you work out the different segments that you want to break up and how you watch them. We hope you find this video information um, informative and helpful. It is a privilege for us to be involved in your care. And please remember that we at the Heart Institute are always here for you. Don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. Our first speaker today is Amy Charlebaugh. Amy is the Advanced Practice Nurse for Cardiac Surgery here at the Heart Institute. Welcome, Amy. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, so um, I'm very excited to um, present this uh, this webinar to you guys today. It's very important um, that you guys get to have this information to uh, make sure that you're the best you can be prepared before you come in for your surgery. Like Kathy said, uh, you guys know how to reach us. Uh, we're always available. All of this information is also in your uh, Waiting for Cardiac Surgery book and the package that you uh, should receive from the triage office, and we'll go through that today. Um, and then the only thing I wanted to, um, to start off with as well um, was uh, just to make sure uh, before we start that um, you have a loved one or your contact person with you um, so they can actually watch this webinar as well. Uh, sometimes getting a lot of information at once is quite overwhelming. So if your loved one um, is available or if your contact person, even if, if it's not at the same time, if they can watch this information as well, uh, they should be included and in play. They do play an important uh, role in your life and your healing journey. Um, so that would be fantastic, okay? Uh, we also say uh, to include your loved one in your upcoming appointments and any education moments that might be in the hospital. Um, and if for some reason your loved one cannot be here in person, there's some other things we can do. So have a cell phone and they can have a cell phone and you can speak or a telephone speak uh, over speaker so they can hear uh, what the uh, healthcare team is, is um, talking about and be involved as well. So uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start the presentation. Um, because of 
the, uh, I don't want to, my face to be a distraction at all to anybody. So I'm going to take myself off video um, and we're going to go ahead. So um, one of the very first things uh, for our patients who are waiting at home for their surgery is it's so, so important to listen to your body and to your symptoms. Um, if you've seen your doctor, you've explained to them your symptoms um, and say something changes after you've seen your doctor. Uh, so your symptoms are becoming more frequent or you're having worsening symptoms. This is very, very important. Even if your surgery example was booked for one week from now, it is so essential that you do not wait and that you listen to your symptoms. So example, if you're waiting for a bypass surgery, sometimes it's hard to know when something would be an emergency or when to call. So at the Heart Institute, um, we have this little tracker tool, we call it, and it helps direct you to know when something would be an emergency or when to call us or what to do, depending on the degree of symptoms that you're having. So um, if you're in the green zone at the very top, that means you're all clear. So you're not having increase in heart symptoms or any new heart symptoms like chest pain, pressure, shortness of breath. You're not feeling more tired or weak. Um, you're resuming your normal physical activity. Um, you're increasing your walking. You're taking your medications as normal. Keep doing what you're doing. However, if something changes and you go into the yellow zone, the caution zone, so uh, you're having an increase in your symptoms or you're having angina or chest pain on a regular basis, uh, you're having these symptoms with activity and they're relieved with your nitro, sp nitro spray that you've been prescribed by your doctor. Again, this is for patients, example, who are waiting for bypass surgery. Um, and your medications are getting low or you're having difficulty maybe going up the stairs when you didn't have that difficulty before, that is so important. You need to call us. So you can call the uh, surgery triage office if it's during the day. You can also call the nursing coordinator number and you can call your doctor's office. Do not wait. Uh, don't wait for things to go away. Um, don't wait a couple days to see if it gets worse. It's important that you act on it that day. Now, if you're having angina or heart symptoms, um, at the very first sign of those symptoms, you would stop immediately and you would rest, sit on the couch. If no relief with the rest, then you should take your first spray of nitro or the tablet. You wait five minutes, okay? You're still having a little bit of pain or any pain. You take a second spray of your nitro or a tablet. You wait another five minutes. So if after two sprays and another five minutes, you're still having pressure or pain or having symptoms, then you need to call 911 and take a third spray of nitro or take a tablet, okay? It's so, so important that you don't wait uh, if you're having symptoms, even if you're on the list for surgery. Um, it does not matter if your surgery is one week from now. It's very important to listen to your symptoms. And don't ever be afraid to call us, even though we're a hospital. Some people are nervous about calling a hospital or coming into a hospital, but it's very, very important for your, for your life. So some of my patients are actually waiting for valve surgery as well, or other types of surgery. So it's important for you guys also to listen to your symptoms. So say you have an increase in shortness of breath, you're having an increase in chest pain, you're feeling dizzy at times, your symptoms are worse and are more frequent than when you last saw your heart doctor. You need to call us. And again, if something is an emergency, you're feeling unwell, your uh, symptoms are not going away, do not delay. You call 911 and you go to the nearest emergency room. Some people are worried, you know, they, they don't live in Ottawa. Maybe they live um, out, of, out in the country area or in another province or what have you. So they're worried that if they call 911, they won't go to the right hospital. You shouldn't have to worry about that. Um, you go to the closest hospital and then they will call us and we would go from there, okay? So we're gonna go over um, how you and your loved one uh, can prepare uh, for your upcoming cardiac surgery at home. So like Kathy said, 
um, you know, being part of this webinar can actually increase and better your outcomes after your surgery. So it actually can make you do better. Um, so one of the first questions people ask is, you know, what's the process? When will my surgery be booked? Who will I see? What, what, what does that look like? So uh, the process uh, goes like this. So uh, maybe you had an angiogram or you've had an echo test um, and the cardiologist or the heart doctor looks at it and says, yes, you're a candidate for surgery. So that doctor would give a referral to our cardiac surgery program. Once that referral is, is received, then a surgeon would re review your case. And once accepted for surgery, you would be assigned to a surgeon from our cardiac surgery triage office. Once you've been assigned a surgeon, you would get a, a package in the mail. Um, and Kathy had showed you that uh, Waiting for Cardiac Surgery book, and that's probably where you got the invitation to watch this webinar as well, um, with all the information in there, with phone numbers, who to call. And also in that package will be the name of your surgeon and how to contact um, his or her office. Once you um, have been accepted, uh, then you will also receive an appointment for a consultation with your surgeon. After this consultation, um, you'll have what we call a pre-admission unit appointment. So uh, you will come to the Heart Institute, it's located on the first floor at the moment, um, and you will uh, receive your surgery date after you've had this pre-admission appointment. Some people ask me, um, what happens if my surgery date has changed and why would this happen? So sometimes that does happen. Um, so sometimes we might give you a surgery date and then we have to change the date. So uh, the reason why that might happen is usually unforeseen. Okay, so unforeseeable circumstances. Maybe there's an emergency or an urgency or something's happened in, on that. Sometimes we might even bump you up. So maybe your surgery was booked in one month, but now we're seeing if we can actually book you in one week. So it is a possibility that your surgery date could change. Um, so I just wanna let you know that that, it, that can happen. Um, and the biggest thing, again, is to listen to your symptoms. And if you're having any change in your symptoms, that you need to contact us. So what happens in this pre-admission appointment? Um, so uh, when you come in for your pre-admission appointment, uh, after you see your doctor for the consult, the surgeon, uh, you'll actually meet another doctor. It's called an anesthesia doctor. They're going to review your medications, your past medical history. So it's a good idea for you to bring that information with you uh, for those appointments. Um, they even want to know if you've had surgery when you were 12, you know, all of your medical history, all of your medications, even if they're vitamins, anything like that, bring that in with you. You'll also meet a nurse at this appointment. They're going to review with you, again, the instructions of what to do before your surgery. So a lot of the information in this webinar about how to prepare, they're actually going to go over, over some of that with you as well. Example, uh, before you have your surgery, at least the day before, you're going to get these little special scrubbies, little special sponges uh, to wash anywhere there's going to be an incision. So the nurse in the pre-admission appointment will show you how to do that and will provide them to you. Another thing that they should provide to you is a prescription for an ointment that we're going to ask you to apply to your nasal uh, nares, your nasal mucosa area. And uh, the reason for that is there's a, a um, bug called MRSA. So this nasal ointment can actually uh, prevent it from uh, causing any infection uh, concerns after your surgery, possibly. Uh, usually we take that five days before your surgery date. The next thing is medications. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to know, am I supposed to take my medications the day before my surgery or the day of? So the nurse will go over all of that with you and give you instructions of what to do. One of the key things is a lot of our patients might be on blood thinners. So they might be on example like Coumadin or Warfarin, maybe a Pixaban or Plavix. So um, the nurses and the anesthesia doctor in the pre-admission unit appointment will also help, um, help you 
uh, know when to take your medications because your blood thinners, if you're on them, usually need to be held for a certain amount of days before your surgery. So patients awaiting valve surgery. So this is not for patients who are going for a bypass surgery, okay? It's only if you're going for a valve surgery, whether it be a valve replacement or a valve repair, as example, it's really important that you see your dentist before your surgery. So we usually say rule of thumb within about six months of your surgery date. Um, why? Why do you have to do this? So the reason why is because you've got a little road from your mouth to your heart area where your valve area is. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that there's no infection risk or anything like that in your gums uh, or in your mouth that could cause any infection with your new valve after your surgery. So we wanna make sure that your dentist takes a look at your teeth and your gums and your mouth and gives us the go ahead that everything looks a-okay. So uh, when you know that you're gonna be going for valve surgery, um, it's a good idea to make an appointment with your dentist and they will uh, ensure that everything is okay with your mouth. Now, say the dentist say, tells you that, hey, you're actually, uh, we see an infection um, or there's something going on, we might have to pull a tooth. Well, that's really important to let us know. So you would actually call uh, the surgeon's office or the triage office and let us know we want to make sure when you're booked for surgery that your body is at its best to decrease any risk for an infection. In regards to that, it's also important for any patient, bypass patients, valve patients, any surgery, heart surgery that you're going to be having, um, that if there's a change in your health while you're waiting for surgery, even if it's not related to your heart, uh, that you please let us know. So an example would be, you know, oh, you think you have a new uh, infection or fevers, um, or maybe you had to go for um, some type of other procedure, it's so important that you ensure that you let us know. So again, we know that your body is at the best health uh, when you go for your surgery. How to get ready at home for heart surgery. So again, you wanna look at your waiting for cardiac surgery guide. It's available online as well. You want to watch this webinar um, for my female patients. So especially if you're a C cup or higher breast size, um, what we notice has really helped with decreasing um, pulling on the incision, especially at the end and helping possibly with your pain. Wearing a bra most of the day and most of the night actually helps you. So what we recommend is actually, uh, if it's possible, to um, bring in a couple comfortable fit front closing bras, okay? The reason we, why we say comfortable fit, sometimes you might want to go up a size, is just to make sure that, um, that if you've uh, retained any fluid during your surgery, that it still fits okay and it's comfortable enough. Um, so that's really important. You still want to make sure, though, that it's supportive. So uh, it doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be, you know, tailored. Uh, it, it really could be from anywhere, uh, even Walmart, I know has some. Um, but please bring a couple of those as well. As I said before, symptom changes, you're gonna call us. If you smoke, you wanna quit smoking. You wanna call us for help, you don't need a referral. And I have one of my coworkers, uh, she's gonna be talking about this uh, right after. We want to practice how we move before you even have cardiac surgery. So I'm going to talk about that shortly, very lightly. And my physiotherapist, Regan, she's going to be telling you and showing you the exercises a little bit more thoroughly in her, in her webinar section. Eating well. A lot of people don't even realize that food is like the 101 on making sure our body heals. So people forget that actually eating lots of protein and eating good food can actually help prepare you for surgery and decrease your risk for an infection. So you wanna eat lots of protein. Kathleen, our dietitian, she's also gonna be talking to you guys about this. And um, if, you know, example, you've lost 10 pounds uh, coming up to your surgery or this type of thing, or you're not eating a lot, then it would be a good thing to call, call the dietitian here at the Heart Institute for a referral so we can get you set up before you come in for your surgery. 
It's important after surgery too. So day before your surgery, okay? So the day before your surgery, uh, we want you to have nothing to eat or drink after midnight, okay? Even water. Uh, you may have a couple sips of water with your uh, medications in the morning, uh, but that's it. The day of your surgery. So uh, you will receive a call before about four o'clock the day before your surgery to confirm when to come into the Heart Institute the next morning. Um, so there's two times in the day that you could have your surgery. So it's, we do uh, surgery twice in the day. So there's one that goes in the morning and one case that goes in the afternoon. So if you're going for surgery in the morning, uh, then the staff will ask you to come in for 6 a.m. to the Heart Institute and you'll go to the pre-admission unit. If you're going in the afternoon, we'll ask you to come in for about 9 a.m. Um, if you're actually having surgery in the morning, usually your surgery will start, but you'll go down for your surgery about 7, 7.30 in the morning. And then if you're going in the afternoon, usually it's between about one or two in the afternoon, just to give you a, a rough idea, okay? When you come in, uh, we don't want you to bring any jewelry, any expensive items, any nail polish, perfume, earrings, those types of things. When you go for surgery, um, if you have any jewelry on, we wanna take it off. Example, if you were wearing a ring, uh, we'd want to remove it because if uh, we give you lots of fluid during your surgery and you might get a little bit of fluid retention so we wouldn't want your your finger to be swollen and have any risk for uh, your circulation to have any problems nail polish or or um, fake nails we ask that you make sure that they're removed before you come in so we can check your oxygen uh, levels uh, easily um, what to bring, that's important too. So obviously you're gonna bring your medications, your current medications, including any vitamins. If you use a CPAP machine at home, you should bring that in because we are gonna use it here after your surgery. Uh, roomy shoes, the reason why I say roomy shoes or slippers is a lot of our patients gain about five to 10 pounds, at least of, of some fluid after your surgery. Um, so uh, the reason why is we give you a lot of fluid during your surgery and then we usually get rid of it before you go home. Uh, but it's important if your feet are a little bit swollen that they're comfortable in your shoes and there's a good grip at the bottom so you're not at risk for falling or for falling, sorry, because uh, one of our rule of, rules of thumb is we're going to get you up and moving as soon as we can because we know that that's good for you. You want to have a change of clothes for when you're ready to go home, underwear so you can wear underwear while you're here at the hospital. Uh, and again, the females, we want to make sure you have that, those bras. You'd wanna have a toothbrush and some hygiene items. And if you want some more information about that, you can read your Waiting for Cardiac Surgery booklet. One thing we notice a lot of people think, they like say I have a, I've had a patient, he had a very, very hairy chest and he thought he would do us a favor and shave his chest. Don't do that. Don't shave any body hair near any of your future incisions before your surgery. It can actually increase your risk of infection because it can cause ingrown hairs and irritation. So uh, please don't do that. When you come into the Heart Institute, um, the day of your surgery, uh, we'll actually use a little special clipper. It's not, a sh it's not a shaver. It's very different if we need to, to clip any hair near the incisions, okay? So no shaving, please. So uh, prepare the body for surgical success with the conditioning, pre-surgery conditioning. So again, I told you Regan's gonna talk about this in her talk, but it's so, so important to continue to do walking. It's one of the best exercises. Uh, before you come in for your surgery, continue that activity if you're able to, okay? So she's going to go over this, but it's so important for you to be at the best uh, shape that you can be, even if it's walking daily, uh, before you come in for your surgery, for your muscles and for your healing, for your lungs and for your whole body. External precautions. So um, most of our patients at the Heart Institute will have what we call a sternal incision. So an incision in the middle of your chest. Um, and the incision is where the sternal bone is, it's in the, through the sternal bone, okay? 
So uh, those patients need to make sure that they're not lifting, pushing, or pulling anything more than five to 10 pounds for about six to eight weeks after their surgery date. So sometimes we forget that maybe our dog weighs, you know, 15 pounds or, you know, your grandchild or your child weighs more than 15 pounds or five pounds. Um, so it's those little things that you think about every day. We don't want you to push on your chair to get up, to push up. That's actually pushing more than five pounds. So uh, the, all of these things, abiding by these sternal precautions, help make sure that that sternum um, has time to heal, okay? I always tell people, it's, it's like, say you had a broken leg, a doctor would put a cast around your leg and you know, to protect it, to make sure that that bone healed properly. Well, the same thing is, is like that with the sternum. So one of the things you can do is practice crossing your arms over your chest. Um, in the hospital, we'll give you actually this little baby pillow to help remind you to cross your arms and not use your hands to push up. Uh, examples to get in and out of bed or out of the chair. So that's going to be one of the most important things after your surgery. And we're going to help you with that. We'll, we're here. Um, but also Regan's going to go over that with you today to, to show you how you can practice for that. Now, some of my patients uh, may not be having an incision in the chest area. They may be having a little incision at the thorax area um, or a minimally invasive uh, procedure. So that's a little bit different than my patients who are having the incision down the chest area. So um, for those patients, the precaution is a little bit different. So we just wanna make sure that uh, anybody with a minimally invasive procedure, that you just don't lift anything more than about 10 pounds for the first four to six weeks until you see your surgeon. Um, another thing is um, a lot of patients' questions is, uh, why, why can't I have a minimally invasive procedure or can I, you know, what does that look like? So a majority of our patients are best candidates at this time for the uh, traditional incision at the chest area or incision at the sternum. Um, so uh, the important part is that uh, the reason why some patients may not be a candidate for the minimally invasive is because the minimally invasive procedure is best for patients usually with a single blockage example for a by, um, the LAD lesion for the uh, bypass. Um, or a multi, uh, multi vessel, vessel uh, lesions and a hybrid procedure, meaning they might have a stent with uh, this minimally invasive procedure. Um, at the same time, one of the biggest things is that if you're interested in that uh, or wondering about that, then you should talk to your surgeon and they can discuss that with you. So I just want to thank everybody um for listening and for uh being a part of our webinar it is so so important um again we are here if you need anything at all um and please tune in to the recovering after surgery uh what part that will be coming after this and that's where i'm going to talk about um your journey after your surgery and what that looks like and what your family can ex expect as well um, I'm going to stop here and I will introduce the next speaker. Thank you so much. Our next speaker is Marie France Walter. Marie France is a registered nurse in the smoking cessation program. Hello, my name is uh, Marie France Walter. I'm one of the registered nurse here at the Heart Institute with the Quit Smoking Program. My goal today is to give you the information and the tools that you will need to make the best possible informed decision regarding smoking and your upcoming surgery. As you may have heard repeatedly, tobacco use is one of the principal causative factors in coronary heart disease. You may have tried to quit 
multiple times and feel that you are presently in a very stressful period of your life. You may be thinking, I don't know if I can quit at this time, or does it make a difference if I quit now? What if I wait for my surgery? The answer to this question is yes. Quitting smoking enables you to maximize your surgical outcomes. Smoking is linked to many complications. It can make your hospital stay longer. It can slow your healing process. Smoking can increase your risks of infection, respiratory failure, heart attack, stroke, septic shock. It also increases your risk of blood clots. We understand that nicotine is a very powerful addiction. It is complicated. It is a mood altering drug that comes with a full baggage of consequences. Every step you take to quit or reduce makes a difference. Some practical tips to get you started would be things like make your home and car smoke free. Change your routines and your daily activities, your patterns. Think about when and where you smoke. Think about alternate things to do instead of smoking. Delay your first cigarette of the day and increase the time between the others. Talk to a healthcare provider about nicotine replacement therapy. Also, think about how to manage your stress in different ways, such thing as music, exercise, talking to a friend. They're all things that could be helpful. There are true benefits to start your journey to quit or reduce as soon as possible. Here at the Heart Institute, we are a safe, understanding, and non-judgmental group of professionals. We are ready to offer you the help, the tools, and the support that you need on this journey. Do not, you do not need a doctor's referral to join our Quit Smoking program. Please contact us at 613 696-7069 or email us at quitsmoking at ottawaheart.ca. The benefits of quitting start immediately. Within eight hours, the oxygen level in your body go back to normal. Within 48 hours, the chances of having a heart attack start to go down and your sense of taste and smell start to improve. Within 72 hours, your lungs start to relax, making it easier for you to breathe. Within two weeks to three months, the blood flow through your body and the airflow through your lungs get better, improving your overall circulation. Within six months, coughing, tiredness, sinus congestion, shortness of breath, are all symptoms that will improve. Within one year, the risk of a heart attack from smoking drops to half of that of someone who still smokes. In conclusion, please do not hesitate to contact us. We can help you on your journey to become smoke-free. We want to help you achieve the best possible surgical outcome. We can help you create a personalized plan and offer the support, the tool, and the help that you need to achieve this goal. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you, Marie Franz. Thank you for watching this video series. It is important patient and family education and information for your surgery. We hope you found it helpful. If, please, if you have any questions or concerns that have not been answered,
you can call your surgeon's office, the Cardiac Surgery Triage Office at 613-696-7062 or the Surgical Nursing Coordinator at 613-696-7000, extension zero. Very soon, we will be contacting you to ask specific questions to help us identify if you need additional help before your surgery. We look forward to seeing you soon. To find all the tools and resources presented in this video, please visit our website at ottawaheart.ca.